Alrighty guys, welcome back. Uh, earlier we were discussing uh, Ryan Day, the head coach of Ohio State, and now we're going to be uh, diving into uh, the world's first restaurant that is completely run by robots. Uh, <laughs> All right, go I, ahead. I just want to say before I, I tell you guys about this, I, I don't like this idea. Um, I'm somebody that works in the service industry, so I am not okay with this. I just want to put that out there before I dive into this. Oh, um, we're we're gonna be we're we're gonna fight today, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, the world's first operating restaurant where orders and foods are taken care of by robots and AI is set to open in the United States. Perfect for those days where you can think of nothing worse than having to leave your house and interact with another human in order to get your burgers and fries fixed. A restaurant coming to California where robots pretty much run the place. Uh, to me, this basically sounds like a Black Mirror episode. I don't know if you've seen Black Mirror. <laughs> Absolutely. Matter of fact, <laughs> the very first episode, season one, episode one, mm -hmm. greatest, most painful <laughs> episode in television history, <laughs> in my opinion. <laughs> uh, if you don't know that one, that's the politician one. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was... <laughs> See? That See? Was... <laughs> the light, I saw when the light came, like, oh, yeah. <laughs> um, Cali Express in Pasadena is set to open as the world's first operating restaurant where both ordering and every single cooking process are fully automated. Uh, when you step into Cali Express, Burger Bot and Flippy make made by Miso Robotics will be the chefs behind your burger and fries order. The robotic arm and sensor systems cooking your food at your request. Uh, Miso Robotics says the robots taking the jobs of fast food workers will protect workers from the da dangers which come from being around fast food fryers and hot oil. Mm. Um, <laughs> the robots Tell me will, how you really feel. <laughs> uh, robots will also cut costs for restaurant and cal Cali Express not having to pay workers, uh, sub subsequently making it more viable to offer higher quality products such as Wagyu. Okay, I'm gonna give. I'm my gonna let you. I'm gonna let you go. You got it. You got to go in here. I want you to you go strong. You you get you get the lead on this, and yeah. then I follow. Um. So I work in the service industry. I am a server when I am not doing the show or going to class. Um. First off waiters waitresses we're not paid a lot of money our our income is strictly relies on tips because mm -hmm. we only get paid like i only get paid two dollars 13 cents an hour so the fact that they're saying that they're trying to cut restaurant costs by just having robots you're not spending a lot of money on your employees anyway so also my partner he works in food he is a pastry chef so this affects nice. him as well <laughs> um so if robots become a thing you know me and my partner could be out of a job completely and this is like his livelihood obviously i won't be a server for the rest of my life at least god willing um <laughs> <laughs> but this is his this is his livelihood this is his career this is what he loves to do and so the fact that they're trying to bring in stuff to take away people's jobs i don't really like um keep on going plus, girl keep on going and like i said before people in the service industry even the people who work in the kitchen are definitely not paid as much as they should be paid um so that's my that's my take on that Anything else? I'm gonna go the opposite direction. I'm oh, actually I'm gonna do both sides. Yes, I am gonna go both. I'm gonna go both directions on this. Well, I also just but. feel like, you know, you lose. You're, st we're starting to lose the human touch and a lot of things. And I don't know if I like that or not. Like I love DoorDash as much as the any other person does because if I don't feel like going and talking to people, I don't have to. I can order food. It'll be delivered to my house. You know. Um, but like how in my opinion how can you trust a, a robot to make sure that your burger is cooked all the way or that it's cooked to a, a 
like medium well if you wanted medium well how how are you going to trust that a robot can do that you know so okay that's, all right that's my you, you, spiel <laughs> okay so first off i do understand where you're coming from about waiters and waitresses not getting paid enough um this automation is coming it's it's going to happen but i'm going to say why as a person who grew up and went through college and actually waited tables and was really good at it too i, I made good money as a waiter yeah it's crazy that you we're still making the same amount of money when you were waiting tables you only get paid like two something an hour mm -hmm. uh and then I remember I used to make two something an hour and I'd make about a hundred dollars a night in tips back, yeah. back in those days. Uh, but now I'm looking at this as an adult now, um, not meaning like you're not an adult, just meaning as I've gotten older and I've met more people who are restaurant owners mm -hmm. and, and, and things. And a few things that have come out, number one, First off, in California, it's not that way. If you work in a fast food restaurant, the minimum wage is twenty dollars an hour. That's the first thing. Mm -hmm. Take a take a look at that. That is it's twenty dollars an hour, and that's the minimum wage. And I've lived in California for the last thirty years before moving uh, where I live now, and know a number of restaurant owners. And their big problem, even at $15, $18, $20 an hour, is they can't get people to wait tables. I mean, not wait tables, but work at these restaurants. Mm -hmm. It's not, it, this is coming about not because of, of like, hey, we're paying too much. It's they can't get people to work at all. So restaurants are closing their dining rooms because they don't have enough people to fill these jobs. Uh, now we're talking about California. I'm talking, I'm not talking about on a national level. I'm just talking about what I have learned from no, talking to people. There's definitely a shortage still in service industry workers where, where I work, we're, we're very short staff. Like last week See, I had, last week I had to work a 15 hour shift because they didn't have somebody who could cover the morning shift that I had to work. Exactly. So yeah. that is the issue. That has been what the big issue has been is not enough workers. And then when you when you're in a situation where there's not enough workers, you run into a situation where you're saying not enough workers, not enough quality workers. Uh, for every one faith, there's someone that may have some issues, drug, alcohol, the things of that nature. So there are some issues with some of the workers that they have. Then you also look at the situation of coming off of a pandemic where people are starting to look at food safety. Also the cost, inflation, as things go up and the cost of, we're talking a burger restaurant, the cost of burgers keep going up and up and up. This is a situation where uh, I have a friend of mine that owns a large group of Habit Burgers throughout uh, California, and he's having these issues. These restaurants, the automated systems does a few things. One, you don't have, you, you know, you cut down on how many waiters and more back office people, how many, I keep saying waiters, cooks and people, employees that you have to have to run the system. Uh, two, quality of food. The quality of the food, because it becomes consistent, because it's on an automated system, the burgers are always cooked at the same temperature. The buns are all the same. Everything is uniform. So you get you get a burger and you're like, this sucker is supposed to have four pickles. It has one pickle and it's on the side somewhere. All of that goes out the wayside where it's always consistent. The cost of everything kind of goes down so that the consumer ends up with a consistent product that is cooked at a consistent temperature and the cost is lower. Mm -hmm. All these type of automations, there's a give and take because on that other side are people like 
my girl Faith here, who depend on who, and not just saying that you depend on that job, but depend on these kind of jobs to to pay their bills. And I could see how they would be worried where, hey, these jobs, these machines are going to take our jobs. I get that side too. Now, uh, your significant other, I don't see that affecting him mm -hmm. because he's, there's a difference between a burger restaurant where your uh, robots are running the drive through and running certain things where a pastry chef, a chef, that is a personalized touch where the chef is doing something that's a little bit more than just cookie cutter. Mm -hmm. uh, these robots are taking away the cookie cutter jobs, but like a high-end pastry chef who's making a wedding cake or making these, these, these amazing truffles and turnovers and mm -hmm. pastry items, which we all love. I don't see that affecting him, them, mm -hmm. but I do see it affecting more the cooks, uh, the drive-through, mm -hmm. uh, the fast food restaurant. I can definitely see the fast the fast food restaurant business ultimately changing. Do you see that? Yeah, no, I understand like where you're coming from from that perspective. Um, because I definitely there's already things like that in fast food restaurants. Like, um, I've gone into McDonald's a couple times, and they have like these huge tablets that you can like the kiosk. Do your we order even have them here. Of, like, going up to the person at the register and taking the order. Um, my only I thing is see. like, mm -hmm. Go ahead. Um, how, how are these things going to do like modifications? You know, like, do you know how many ridiculous requests I get of people trying to change up their food? Like are the, the little robot hands going to be able to understand yes. that? <laughs> Okay, because of those kiosks, because I, I, it's one of those things where they're actually kind of made to order where there's less likely that they're going to happen, where we're still talking only fast food. I'm putting this in more of a fast food burger situation. Mm -hmm. If you, I think there's always going to be a need for the faiths of the world. And that means there's going to be, maybe you're not, serving burgers at a habit burger any longer or at a pizza hut but i think more of the four and five star restaurants that personal interaction i don't see that going away because everyone wants to go out and get out of the house on date night or you want to meet with your buddies and watch the game those places are always i think will still be there me and my buddies were all going to see the Alabama Georgia game and then Ohio State Michigan. That's gonna that has that will never disappear. I don't foresee that happening. But hey, I want to swing by McDonald's and get my double Big Mac and fries. Oh, I totally see that going away. Yeah. Do you do you see, do you do you agree with that or do you? Yeah, no, I do. Agree. Coming from? I I will say that like fast food places normally if i'm ordering from fast food i'm doing doordash delivery so yeah i don't and really if, interact with anybody with that if you're going if you if you have a taste for a white castle burger or a burger king burger whether becky and jimmy makes it or a robot makes it it's just to me yeah. it's it's going to be the same but if I'm going, I'm going to the local sports bar and I want, I want a beer, I want wings, I want my waitress to bring it out. I want to watch the game and all that stuff. We're not having Judy Jetson's robot come out there and serve you and everything else. You're going to, that if you make, you, you take a, a sports bar or a Ruth Chris out a Chris out there and you're gonna it's Valentine's Day and you and your your boyfriend are going to this nice restaurant. You have you got your hair done, you got a nice outfit on, he's styling and profiling, you guys sit down at the table 
and this robot in this conveyor belt just spits out food on your table. That's not working. That's never going to happen. <laughs> do you agree? Yes, I do. Because I work at a sports bar and I cannot imagine like a robot trying to get around all the people no. that are standing up and around watching the game as they're drinking their beers and eating their wings. It would be an absolute mess. My Big Mac and filet of fish as I go through the drive through get spit out on a conveyor belt. I'm cool with that. I'm going to I'm going to the sports bar to hang out with my buddies. That's never going to happen. That's not it's not going away. Yeah. Feel a little better? A little bit. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, I still, you know, I understand people getting upset about like jobs being taken away cuz I mean, sometimes that's the only job some people can get at one time so yeah. you know yeah. i could see a set i could see a scenario though where the food is more consistent as they're using more artificial intelligence in the back as far as making food but in the front guys guys like you and the people that wait tables and and give that personalized experience that becomes more of a premium. I could see jobs like that, not only sticking around, but becoming more of a must where they're paying a lot more, they're saving on the back end, but providing a much more uh, pleasurable experience in the dining area where you're bringing in the quality people to, to work and they're paying them a lot more to give to give their people, their, their patrons, the best experience possible. So I could see a scenario where waiters and waitresses are getting and cashiers are getting taken care of and getting paid more because it's more important about that experience you're having in a dining room and less about that experience that's in behind the behind the scene. Well, I guess if you're in California, <laughs> uh, make sure you're looking out for the robot restaurant, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> and see. What do you, okay, what do you think about, you're in Georgia, so maybe not so much, but living in California, you started to see uh, the the drones dropping packages off, the DoorDash, the robot DoorDash guy that comes to your door and drops your food off, the being in San Francisco and having uh, the self-driving Uber cars. You don't have a lot of that in Georgia right now. How do you feel about that? Um, as long as I don't have to tip a robot, I would be fine. <laughs> <laughs> and yes, tip a robot. <laughs> you have less of those. Hey, you only gave me three dollars on a thirty dollar tip. I mean, on yeah. a thirty dollar thing, and it's becoming more and more where the DoorDash people are like, "Listen, your tips suck. You need to cough up more money." Mm -hmm. You know what? I'll skip you, Becky, and I'm going, I'll take the robot. <laughs> uh, well, uh, with that, we're going to take a quick break. <laughs> I don't we're... think Faith, Faith doesn't like me. I may not make it to this next round. She's going to be able to reach to the screen and start strangling no. me. <laughs> uh, we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we're going to dive into our oddities of the day.